All right, everybody. Welcome back to Musical Adventures with Rob. I don't like that title at all. <laughs> Today I have a completely nonsensical guitar riff and using that as the source material, hopefully turn it into some enjoyable music. Here's the riff we're gonna be working with today. So it has that part, which just kind of seems like random notes and then it also ends like this. So uh, it's a little all over the place. I wanted it to be, I don't know if this is a word, but doopy. Just like doop, 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 boop, 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 whatever that is. And then not really make much sense. So it's in a weird time signature. It ends abruptly. So I'm gonna use this and try to take it in two very different directions. So first off, we're gonna try to make this sound pretty. The drums are not part of the riff. So we just get rid of that. We put it to a metronome. It's at 117 BPM. It can be mapped out. The drums are added in there to make it sound more ridiculous. But right now I'm just gonna start with the guitar riff as it is. This is all gonna be at the lead and the lead parts kind of sit on top of everything. So we, if we can get this a good foundation, we could make it you know, be able to stand up, so to say. I first just let it roll by and just see what chords work. Just like when we did the first making a song in an hour, I just went straight to these chords. And I absolutely love them. And so happens the melody I wrote is in a key that works with these. So there's so many different variations you could do with this shape. And I found a good rhythm there that I liked. And given it's a weird time signature, the rhythm is a bit out there. But once we put the drums and the bass behind it, then it can really solidify that rhythm. I often use these chords with a E major, and that seemed to work really well here too, just to give it some tension and release at the end there. Yeah. So I went through the riff once with those chords, and then I recorded it again with the same chords, but giving it a bit more energy, a different rhythm. This would give it a bit of a build up. And I really like those chords, um, pretty much in anything that they're in. Once the riff goes through once, and then we go to those chords that are a bit more lively, I'm gonna play that same riff that we're building the song around, but just give it a bit more life with some bends, uh, some slides, a little bit of vibrato, holding out notes a bit longer. added a few more notes towards that end part there to just give it a bit more flavor. So after that, I added the drums. That was a bit challenging because it wasn't in a regular time signature, but that also made it pretty fun. So you find different places for, you know, the snare and kick that you normally would. There I tried to add a bit more variance and get that melody sound less static by the things that are around it. Then I just put in some bass. Keep the bass pretty simple, add a little bit of nuance, have it follow those chords rather than follow the melody to structure the song around the chords so that the lead could kind of go crazy above it. Mostly have it just reinforce those chords. After that, I felt when the song picked up a little bit, I put in another guitar. That's just strumming away just to give it a bit more atmosphere when things pick up. But yeah, here's what I came up with. Let's put on the 50 millimeter lens. That looks really beautiful and maybe that'll make this song sound more beautiful too. <laughs> turned out pretty good. <laughs> Next up is trying to take the same riff and uh, make it really aggressive and metal. We're gonna need to change how the guitar is amped. There we go. I'm also changing the pickup I'm using. I was using the middle, bringing it to the bridge. So I'm gonna take the riff and change it up a little bit. I'm gonna bring that an octave down to bring it into more uh, metal riff territory. 
And then I'm also gonna change one note to bring it into a scale that I'm super used to. Is that a good one? Nah, I don't really like that very much. Hmm. No. Yeah, it still sounds kind of optimistic to me. I think I'm gonna try using the same, same exact notes. So that's exactly the same. Could I put something under that to make it sound heavier? Still sounds happy. I kind of like those yeah. chords there. Putting the fifth underneath it. Yeah. Okay. I think I can get like the main melody in the same octave. And if it has like a really uh, badass backing track, it could work. I'm getting there. That last note just makes it sound optimistic. Hmm. No, it still sounds happy. This is a tougher one. Eh. I would like to keep the high notes in there. Maybe I don't need to change any notes. But... Nice, okay, I played it with enough <laughs> anger. <laughs> During the notes that are out of key, I just play them more angrily, <laughs> or with like a bend or something. Okay, I can figure this out, I'm, on, I'm, I'm getting there. What, what could, how could I make that note? Uh... Yeah! <laughs> That sounds sick. <laughs> the notes in the melody are major and optimistic sounding, but you just need to add notes that makes those not the root. Let me add some harmonies into the end. Yeah! <laughs> I'll do my best on the drums. Probably do some editing in post. I'll figure it out. Uh. Cool, I can work off that in MIDI. I'm gonna add some double kick to the end. Maybe I'll make this uh, triplets. That could be cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Maybe just need another cymbal hit there. Cool. All right, on to bass. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Ooh, I could do that at the end. That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess that's it then, huh? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's let's listen to it. turned out pretty good. <laughs> this was a lot harder than I was anticipating. But it's it awesome. But I think it turned out pretty cool. Yeah. So if you would like to learn this riff and make a song out of it, we actually have a contest going on right now, which is very much inspired by Andrew Huang. Hey, it's Andrew Huang. He made a melody and let his audience finish it. So this is very much inspired slash ripped off from Andrew's video. And if you're not subscribed to Andrew Huang, you definitely should be. He may be the most talented musician on YouTube. So check him out. Um, he's also like super hot. So, um, so the <laughs> so if you'd like to learn this riff and make a song out of it, we actually have a contest going on right now. We can win one of my signature guitars, either the six string or the eight string, and we're giving away a bunch of boxes of clear tone strings as well, both the runners up and just at random. So I won't go through all the details. Last week's video announced it, so I'll put that in the description. If you'd like to enter, you have a week from today to get your submissions in, and then if you're watching this in the future, here's the aftermath 
and the winner and a mashup of what people did with the song. I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with it. Uh, you can subscribe if you like. I'm sure that's on screen somewhere. Uh, thanks for watching this channel, and I'll see you next week.